If I were to describe Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness speedruns in a single sentence, I would probably refer to this game as a diet version of Pokemon Coliseum. Because the mechanics that made XD's prequel Pokemon Coliseum such an amazing speedrun are no longer present. In some ways, this makes things better, but in other ways, not so much. The first mechanic that is no longer available is the infinite Pokeball glitch. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work in XD Gale of Darkness, but it ends up not really mattering for an any percent speedrun. But the second is the X item glitch. With this being a Generation 3 Pokemon game, you aren't given the option to use an X item on a partner Pokemon in a double battle. Instead, it's automatically applied to whichever Pokemon's turn you use it on. But in Pokemon Coliseum, a certain glitch made it so that you could target a partner Pokemon with an X item, which is a massive tool for speedrunners since it let them set up with their attacking Pokemon and attack with that Pokemon in the same exact turn. And unfortunately for XD, this isn't the only thing that pales in comparison to Colosseum. The boss battle AI in XD makes zero sense. Normally, boss battles are programmed to KO Pokemon that are able to be KO'd with their strongest move. But instead, they're just kind of programmed to randomly use their strongest move. For example, this Ninjask has the moves Dig and Silverwind. And let's say that you had an Umbreon and a Flareon on your side of the field. Normally, boss AI would Silverwind, Umbreon, and Dig Flareon. But instead, it can randomly Silverwind Flareon and Dig Umbreon. And because of this quirk on top of the lack of awesome glitches, the game kind of feels in a weird spot and just not really as cool as Colosseum for speedrunning. However, even with these shortcomings, the route itself is quite unique because of these changes, on top of the Pokemon used to beat the game. For Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, you'll always start off with an Eevee as your starter Pokemon. It's really nice too, because in one of the first towns of the game, you get access to every Eevee Illusion Stone for free. But the crazier part is that they even have stones for Umbreon and Espeon, since day and night cycles don't exist which is so thoughtful of them to give us the best evolution for Pokemon speedrunning. Just like the prequel Pokemon Coliseum, we get to sweep the game with Espeon. But instead of Quilava or Umbreon as our secondary partner, Shadow Teddy Ursa becomes the best option for a speedrun. One of the big reasons that Teddy Ursa is such a good Pokemon to use is that it's actually the first Pokemon in the game that we can catch. It's even a guaranteed catch without having to weaken it. But what I love most about Teddy and Espeon combined is just how well their moves work when used together. First of all, a lot of move choices are used to KO Pokemon like usual because of fast animation since you can turn them off or to complement your partner Pokemon since every battle in XD is a double battle. Early on, Espeon will have access to Bite, Confusion, and Tail Whip to help out Teddy's somewhat weak early game moves. Bite in particular has the fastest animation out of Espeon's entire move pool. Confusion is the obvious same type attack bonus move you can rely on, and Tail Whip hits both opponents in a double battle, lowering both of their defenses by minus one. These moves combined with Teddy's physical power are amazing because a fast Pokemon like Espeon using Tail Whip or Bite gives you some massive options for Teddy when it needs a bit of extra oomph to KO certain Pokemon. What's even better, however, is how much Teddy's move pull helps Espeon even more to dunk on certain Pokemon. The two best complementary moves alongside Espeon are Refresh and Fake Tears. Refresh is amazing because it gives you access to a move that doesn't play in animation if Teddy isn't hit with a status move. And because Teddy doesn't always do enough early on in a double battle to justify using a move with it, Refresh becomes quite refreshing. While the move Fake Tears is the reason why the X item glitch not being in the game isn't actually too big of a deal, because Fake Tears lowers your target's special defense by minus two, while also letting Espeon attack or set up on the side. And it's moves like this that really show that these Pokemon go together like peanut butter and jelly. And now that we have a basic idea of how the speedrun plays, I want to go through the entire speedrun to show you that it's even more unique and special than just writing it off as a diet Pokemon Coliseum. 
the beginning of xd starts off with is that a lugia oh my god it's stealing a boat holy sh so yeah there's a lot to unpack here but the gist of it is that five years after the events of pokemon coliseum the evil organization cypher is back and abusing shadow pokemon again but this time they have brought a shadow lugia that's been rumored to be impossible to purify and through this massive powerhouse of a Pokemon, they can do things like steal a boat with psychic powers or even do worse things than Team Plasma did in Black and White 2. But nah, stealing a boat's way cooler. Just about as cool as you subscribing to the channel. Once the intro is completed, the speedrun for XD Gale of Darkness starts off by hoping that you've successfully manipulated an Eevee with a plus special attack nature and hidden power Psychic, which is a kind of weird hidden power to rely on since you would expect better coverage to save you more time. But as it turns out, Psychic type is a ridiculous and powerful type on its own. It's crazy to say that by the end of the game, your move pool is hidden power, psychic, bite, and sand attack, which you'll never use. And the real nice thing about Eevee early on is that we don't really need to use its base form for very long. With the Sun Shard item equip and the ability to gain friendship through walking, it'll only take about two to four battles before getting an Espeon. What's even better, however, is Teddy is obtained at around the 9 minute mark, where the goal is to pray for good enough attack and speed since you can't manipulate Teddy's stats. And according to the speedrunning notes, getting the acquired 25 attack and 16 speed for Teddy Ursa at level 11 is about a 12.5% chance of happening. Pretty rough odds overall, but if you want to KO Pokemon in this brutal game, you're gonna need good enough stats to do it. And it's at this point where you finally have both Pokemon that you'll find out that shadow moves in XD are very different from Colosseum. XD Gale of Darkness introduced a new system where every shadow move was super effective towards non-shadow Pokemon, not very effective against shadow Pokemon, and hyper mode was replaced with reverse mode. Reverse mode is pretty awful because the only thing it's useful for is getting your shadow meter down. Reverse mode doesn't even increase your critical hit chance like hyper mode did and even hurts your shadow Pokemon every single turn it's stuck in reverse mode. And the only time reverse mode is useful in a speedrun is if you have a very bad purifying nature since the rate at which your shadow Pokemon meter goes down is based on the nature of your Pokemon. Compared to Colosseum where you need to go through a massive amount of battles before you can purify your Pokemon, XD puts you in a position where you can purify Teddy after five battles. This is all thanks to the game putting you in a gate village extremely early, where the shadow Pokemon purifying stone is located. And since we have such a low amount of battles to reliably lower the shadow meter, we're gonna have to rely on essential oils. While I'm not really convinced that they work in real life, they definitely work in Exe Gale of Darkness to get your shadow meter down extremely fast. But just like the real essential oils, these things cost money. And depending on how rough your nature is, you may just have to buy more to get your teddy back to normal. But once teddy is finally purified, we'll now proceed to dump it in the PC before a trip into Mount Battle. Why exactly? Well, it's only because Espeon KOs everything on Mount Battle faster when it battles by itself. We'll then head straight to the Shadow Pokemon Laboratory, where we go through quite a slew of battles in order to make Return even more powerful with level ups, stepping, and X items since they all raise friendship and make Return more powerful. But more importantly, we get fake tears on the big battle against Cypher Admin, Lavrina. Lavrina is very much considered one of the harder fights in the game, as she specializes in very cutesy Pokemon. But just about every one of them hurts like crazy this early on into the game. Beautifly in particular gets two turns to hit either Pokemon with Thief or Gust as her best moves. Typically, you want the damage split between Espeon and Teddy since she has a Shadow Delcaddy in the back with Shadow Rush. And having either Pokemon below half HP by the time Delcaddy shows up can spell disaster for whichever Pokemon she targets depending on the random nature and stats of her Shadow Delcaddy. But with Fake Tears combined with two Confusions, 
you're pretty likely to KO her menacing Delcaddy and walk away victorious. Then continue your way to saving the world. Once you've rescued a certain scientist that was kidnapped after you captured Teddy Ursa, you're then tasked to head to Pyrite Town, the town where you can buy X items and get your hands on the Soothe Bell. Both of these items will boost your friendship much more than usual and let Teddy hit even harder with return, eventually maximizing it to a base power of 102. And we're absolutely gonna need that power by the time we reach the top floor of the new station located in Pyrite Town. You see, the building that used to take you to a massive underground city in Colosseum has since been turned into a new station. And one of the craziest pieces of news that I'm convinced you didn't know about XD Yellow Darkness was that this was actually one of the first Pokemon games to let you die on a fight on purpose. As of this video, the current route in XD Gill of Darkness has you die to three fights on purpose. Because even with the friendship and money loss that you get from losing, sometimes just outright losing a battle is the best and fastest option. And is a concept that is proven to hold up throughout the new releases of Pokemon games. But while losing can be faster, it's not always the best option in the long run, and only time will tell if more battles will be lost on purpose in order to help the game be beaten faster. Because the worst thing you lose from dying on purpose is EXP. With each piece of experience that you miss out on from losing on purpose, you can either end up losing or gaining time back based on the levels that you reach throughout the game. And with even less levels, you'd likely have to make the threshold for those stats almost unreasonable. But honestly, who knows? Only time will tell if this changes. However, what I know likely won't change is how dominant Teddy Ursa becomes when it evolves into the monstrous Ursaring. Not only does Ursaring get a base 130 attack stat, but it also gets Hyper Beam as a physical attacking move since this is a Generation 3 Pokemon game. Most of the time, Hyper Beam is only used to KO Espeon on purpose, or when a Pokemon just doesn't die to Earthquake or Return. But nonetheless, it's a very massive tool for an already powerful Pokemon. And with Earthquake being a spread move on a powerful physical attacker like Ursaring, you can sometimes become your worst enemy and knock out Espeon without meaning to. But honestly, that probably isn't even the worst problem in an XD Gale of Darkness speedrun. Because the final fight in the game only has a 65% chance of winning. As you progress into the final section of XD Gale of Darkness, you'll eventually confront Shadow Lugia and the Grandmaster behind everything, Grievel. And it's not Shadow Lugia that's the problem either. It's Grievel and his team of Rhydon, Moltres, Articuno, Zapdos, Tauros, and Exeggutor. And while you might look at the legendary birds as the biggest threat, it turns out that Exeggutor is actually the one with an absolutely ridiculous move that very few Shadow Pokemon have called Shadow End. Shadow End is a super effective 120 base power physical move that sacrifices half the current HP of the Pokemon that uses it. And if this hits either of your Pokemon, they are guaranteed to instantly lose more than half of their HP or 100% of it if Exeggutor crits. At this point, you might be asking, why not just KO the Exeggutor? Well, because of the random nature of XD's AI, on top of the 40% chance of Shadow End to miss, it becomes statistically more worth it to hope and pray that you can survive three separate turns of Shadow End going off than it would be to fight two legendary birds on the exact same turn. And if Shadow End hits the same Pokemon twice in a row, your run is completely over on the very last fight in the game. But if it targets two of your Pokemon, misses once, or KOs your bear on the third turn of Shadow End, you are guaranteed to win the fight with fake tears combined with psychic moves from Espeon. And the craziest thing about this entire fight is that five out of seven of the final Shadow Pokemon we face are a damage range to die, depending on what stats and natures that you roll on the enemy Shadow Pokemon. Easily making this what I would consider to be the hardest final battle in Pokemon speedrunning history. 
Pokemon Coliseum is easily my favorite Pokemon speedrun of all time. And if you want to see why it's so amazing, check out this video here and consider subscribing for more Pokemon speedrunning news and content.